All elements in a Revit LT project belong to a family, and each family has one or more types. A type is simply a saved version of the family with sizes, settings, and other parameters preset to certain values. One of the easiest ways to change a particular element in your project is to simply change its type. For example, suppose we needed a different size door for this closet right here. All I have to do is select that door element, and over here on the Properties palette, this drop down here is called the Type Selector. So if I wanted to change the size of this closet door, it's as simple as choosing a different type. I can do the same for other elements, like perhaps this wood floor here. If I open up the list, I could change it out to a tile floor by just simply choosing another type off the list. Many common elements, such as the walls and doors that we see here, are included with the Revit LT software. When you start a project, many such elements will immediately be available and ready to use. Other elements are sometimes custom built. The exterior wall treatment was built as a custom family specifically for this building. Like many of the standard components, these elements also have types with sizes and settings that we can modify. For example, several of these exterior window treatments are actually custom families. Now if I right click on one of those, I have the ability to select all instances that are currently visible in this view. And you'll see that along the lower level, they all use the same family and type. If I repeat that process on one of the upper levels, you can see that there are several instances of those as well. Now what if I wanted to make a change to one of these families? For example, suppose I wanted to change the design of the door treatment in this family down at the lower level. Just like the closet door and floor families that we changed a moment ago, this family also has types, and those types have parameters. We can get to those parameters clicking the Edit Type button here on the Properties palette. And when we do, we'll see that there are several dimensional parameters that we have available for us to modify. So let me just make a simple change here, like changing the door width from its current size to something a little bit larger. When I do that, you're going to see that width increase not only in the one that I just edited, but across the entire model. So every instance of this family now has a wider door opening. To edit the individual door location, instead we edit the instance properties. Here you can see directly on the properties palette, that the door opening distance is actually an instance parameter. If I edit that value for the one that I have selected, when I apply the change, notice that it only impacts the one that I have selected. The door opening here and here did not move. That raises the issue that sometimes you may want to make a change to one of the type properties, but you only want that change to apply to the selected instance, not to all instances. So what you do is you click the Edit Type button here on the Properties palette, same as we did a moment ago, but before making any changes, you'll click Duplicate to create a new size. Now you frequently want to name this something a little bit more descriptive, and then you can edit whatever one of the values you like. I'm going to edit the fin inset in this case, make it a little smaller. And notice that when I OK that, the smaller fin inset only applies now to the one that I have selected and does not apply to any of the other instances because they are now two different types. Now you could select one of these other existing instances and also make it the smaller inset because now that type is available on the list and you can apply it just to those instances that need it. Now the element that we're editing here is a custom family designed specifically to fit the facade of this building. It was created in the Revit family editor. The family editor is a content building workspace in Revit LT. Think of it like a workshop where you can modify or build custom components. If we wanted to make a more dramatic change to this facade element that is afforded to us by the settings and type properties dialog, we could edit the item in the family editor. To do that, you simply select one of the instances and click the Edit Family button. As an alternative, you could simply double click on it. When you're here, you'll see that the interface in Revit LT changes slightly. Now, instead of drawing walls, doors, and windows, we're drawing extrused blends and revolves. This component here that actually defined the shape of our overall facade is actually a sweep. And a sweep is nothing more than a shape that moves along a path. So if I selected it here and edit that sweep, you can see that this shape right here is our profile. It has this wedge shape and it moves along a path here that follows the rectangular shape of the overall window opening. Let's say that I wanted to add another form. I'm going to open up the floor plan view in here, and up here at the top I want to add another solid. So I'll go to the Create panel, click the Extrusion button, and I'm just going to add a simple cylinder for this example. I'll finish it, go back to the 3D view, join it with the existing sweep, 
to make sure that we get a nice clean intersection right there. And then let me load that back into my project. When I do, the project will realize that that family already exists and it will ask me to overwrite it. So I'll go ahead and overwrite the existing version. And you're gonna see that cylindrical form now appears at each of the locations that use this family across the bottom floor of the building. This is just a simple example of what's possible in the family editor. In addition to being able to model nearly any imaginal geometric form, we can use parametric dimensions and other constraints that make the potential of the family editor nearly limitless. But you don't have to custom build all the components that you need to use in the design of your projects in Revit LT. Revit LT ships with many sample components to get you started, and there's also a vast collection of elements available online at Autodesk Seek. Seek includes components provided by Autodesk and many product manufacturers. You can find nearly any type of component that you may require. Best of all, even though most of the components are built in the full version of Revit, they are fully compatible with Revit LT with no conversion necessary. I'm going to open up this floor plan view here and zoom in on one of the bedrooms and perhaps I want to add a small lounge chair into this space. I can go to the insert tab here in Revit LT and all I have to do is type in a search for an item that I'm looking for. This will load up my default web browser and run the search query and that will reveal lots of items that I can choose from. Once you locate an item that you'd like to insert in your project, you simply click on it, select the object that you want to load in, and you can either download it to your local computer or to Autodesk 360. After downloading the item, I can click the component button on the architecture tab, click the load family button, browse to the location where I downloaded the item, and open it up in Revit LT. Then all I have to do is simply place it in the space where I'd like it to go. So whether you're working with existing content that comes with Revit LT, downloading it off of Autodesk, or building it yourself, you'll find that your choices for items to place in your models is nearly limitless.